Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. If you don't know who we are, we always do this in every single video. I'm Cassandra. And I'm Mom. <laughs> That's Mom. <laughs> and we are Millennial Mom. And today we are here to talk about Ready to Love Season 4. But own or whoever, I need them to get the this season together because right. sometimes it says season three sometimes it says season four people be telling us it's season four but i really need them to get them together season four episode three the tables have turned and i'm really excited to get into this season of rachel love because i haven't really said my thoughts on some of the men or women yet only mom did if mm -hmm. you saw her preview video right on the cast of who she thought was in her top favorite or not so favorite no they weren't my favorite they were like people to watch because of things that their personality exhibited or the things that they said that maybe didn't necessarily come across like stunning at first i guess but um, <laughs> they were just the people to watch have they changed so far no but one of those people we're going to talk about it Definitely. Actually, two. Definitely. <laughs> so, nephew Tommy comes in because everyone's walked in to get brunch. Mm -hmm. He lets the man know, like, oh, you know, the women think you guys are the top eight here. Because last week, two men went home. Mm -hmm. But then he had the audacity to drop a bomb <laughs> and say, well, one of the women is going home after brunch. I was like, dang, they can't drink enough, they can't eat enough, they can't sip and chill, you they gotta go home. They can't even be really comfortable because if you're going home after brunch, like- You gotta get up now. Yeah, like what do you do? So really, it came across <laughs> as a, like a free roll like, well, I guess I got to mingle. Right, I would have been <laughs> mad. I'm like, no, I wanna sit here and drink some mimosas first. And you know what, this season with two men going home last week and two is gonna go home this week, I don't think within that particular time frame, there's been enough time to really mix and mingle. So this new yeah. gotcha effect, I don't know if I'm feeling it. I'm not feeling it either because there's not enough time for people to actually get to know somebody. I mean, I guess because I guess they're in your age, Rage Mom, no offense. Maybe they're like, well, maybe they should know Alpha First Impressions. But sometimes you need another impression or two if you ask Dietrich. So the first person that stood out to me in the brunch was Tressa because she was talking about, oh, how she's a comedian and, you know, guys probably won't take her serious at first because, you know, she's all jokey when she's trying to be serious. I'm like, okay, I can see that. But mom started to pick up that her confidence level was starting to poke out a little bit. Well, she was also one of my people to watch just because of her personality, what she does for a living, and I have to say it because of her full-figured nature, and mm -hmm. I am too, because these shows are based off a, a cookie-cutter image, and some of us don't fit in that. So, But during brunch, though, and even during not just brunch, but the double date that we're going to talk about too, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that comes up with her conversation with the men. Like, so, you know, do you like what you see and stuff like that? To me, if you're on the show, you're picked on the show, you need to be confident enough to, to know you're on the show. You're good enough. You're beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. So then Alex or Alexis, what's her name? Alex or Alexis? Alexis. She goes around, she's mingling, but she's with Troy at first. And Troy was not my pick at all. You know what? Now that I think about it, there's like all but one of people to watch is in this episode we're going to talk about that stood out. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just getting a vibe from Troy because he was like, yeah, you know, you're my number one. Mm -hmm. And over here kissing her on the cheek and stuff. And Alexis was like, I just have a feeling that Troy is not just saying that to me. He's saying that to multiple women. And he was. He was saying it to Andrea the cat lady some other women, Amber, he was over here touching on Amber's bootleg and stuff. I'm like, Troy, you're giving off very creepy vibes. I need you to stop. But he don't think he needs to stop. And how old is he, like 50? He's 51 as of the airing, but he's probably <laughs> 52 now. But the thing is, he was also on someone to watch just by the things that he said, because he said he wasn't particularly caring for a woman of a particular size. And if well, you watch this show, hate to tell you, Troy, but I'm of a particular size. But well, he not looking for you, and I'm sure he not looking for me, and I'm not checking for him either. Well, you know what? With his swag, I guess, I guess Chris... What's swag? He says he's got it. He's the best thing in Houston. But Chris, KG Smooth, need, maybe needs to lend him his moniker, because that's exactly how Troy was acting during this episode. And to me... It was a turn off, not just to me, but to the other ladies who happened to be part of the 
brunch and the upcoming dates and stuff like that. But after mm -hmm. the brunch, we learned that it was Miss Ida who is not ready well, to love. It was Ida because I noticed this two times and she did it with Stacy. So the first time she did it with Stacy when she was with David. She was just sitting next to them, just trying to get into their conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I guess. She's trying to mingle. <laughs> but then she did it again with AJ. And I guess AJ is Mr. El Chipo, number one. Mm -hmm. And two, the one who be like <laughs> saying what he feels about all the women with no remorse. Because he was like, I'm not feeling Ida. Yeah, and she another, talked too much. another one to watch I had. You know, it was her over-the-top personality. The one who I said gave me just by the personality, like, last season, Denise vibes, mm -hmm. you know, and they just weren't feeling it. I guess she was had too much personality for the men, and that got her sent home. Mm -hmm. And one more thing I want to talk about before we get into dates individually is David asking Tressen, and I believe it was Kyra or either Vernicia. It was Vernicia was in there, too. Uh -huh. He asked the women, like, how would you feel about abstaining from sex right now? Mm -hmm. And both of them were like, mm -mm, that's not what I'm trying to do. But you know what? I personally, for me, I think that is a good character. At least he put that out there on Front Street in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, if you do happen to have a date with him and you're more vocal about your sexual needs, stuff like that, which we're going to see with Miss Alexis, um, he's letting you know off top and... I personally appreciate that. That way you don't have to wonder or guess, and that's just what it is. I know. David was my pick the whole time, so, you know, he's cool for right now. <laughs> so, Tommy, after, you know, they let go Ida, Ida was in her feelings talking about, they don't need to say goodbye to me. They the one who want me to go anyways. I'm like, then they why don't you know crying? you. Right. But just, okay. Just leave, Ida. It's okay. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Ida. <laughs> Nephew Tommy says, you know, it's time to take these ladies out old school and we did get some very interesting dates mm -hmm. so the first date we're going to start off with is aj and alexis mm -hmm. meeting up to go make candle dates yeah. candle dating to make candles it's a candle date yeah to make candles <laughs> and, um through their whole dating thing alexis was definitely forward with what she was trying to get from aj and aj you know mr he has to make everything go his way. Mm -hmm. Wasn't feeling it. He said, that's too aggressive for me. And I'm aggressive. Well, yeah. I mean, her innuendo she was throwing out there was, oh, oh we gonna we got to dip the candle and we got to make it hard. I like the whole thing. And all that stuff. He's like, how? weren't you a, a pastor's wife or something? She's like, what's that got to do with me? You know, one to boom boom. Mm -hmm. That don't have nothing to do with her. <laughs> she moved on. She's trying to find someone else. And she's just being forward with what she wants but you know some people like that some just like with david you put out there that you're abstinent she puts it out there that she's ready to go to hit the sheets you know do mm -hmm. whatever and uh she just didn't find that in aj that she needed to read the room with aj <laughs> well aj wasn't making it any better he was pulling it forward instead of telling her to take a step back mm -hmm. so that's on him since he's so aggressive Next, we have Jason and Kyra, mm -hmm. and I like them so far together. Okay. They seem like they were connecting. They were being genuine. They connect because, you know, they did a lot of physical things together. Right. David went to diving school. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that was a thing until now. Well, who wasn't going to teach you how to dive in scuba? <laughs> Somebody has to be certified. A swim in school. No, a lifeguard in a diving school. Dive, you dive in the ocean. You don't... <laughs> so somebody got to teach you. <laughs> Jason did open up and let her know because he was kind of asking like, you know, are you the type of person to go all in with the things that you do? He's like, yeah, I usually go all in unless, you know, I get depressed. And then he has to take a step back. But this kind of did throw Kyra for a loop. It did. Because she did say that someone in her family did have depression and it did not go the right way. But she was happy that he does go to counseling. So he is trying to, you know, work on his depression. Work on it and manage it the best he can. And I think that gave her a little bit of relief when she, when he said that. Because even he noticed like, oh, her face like was like, whew, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was a good thing, I thought. So hopefully they can keep connected. I really think he likes her. I do too. Not mm -hmm. Alexis. Alexis might be too much for Jason right now. Mm -hmm. So then we see Joel, David, and Troy. 
go on a date with Andrea, Amber, Liz, and Vernicia. It was just a but Mr. triple date. Mr. Troy had a double date within the date. triple dates <laughs> together. And I was like, how? Right. But, but not just mm -hmm. this triple date. There's another quadruple date that happens after this that I think that either like we're going to call up a few friends that we're connected with with the guys and we're going to ask a couple of ladies to come with us and we can mix and mingle because it wasn't like any real one-on-one. -on -one, yeah, it was know? everyone pretty much talking to everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for Troy because Troy was getting extremely handsy and extremely... It just looked uncomfortable with Andrea. Just because someone doesn't tell you that it's making them uncomfortable right. doesn't mean you should keep going. Because you can clearly see on her face when she was getting kissed by him, when he was like, ooh, or she was like, ooh, you touching my bra or whatever, that she was getting uncomfortable. And I'm like, why are you doing this on a first date with Amber on the side of you, Troy? Exactly. And you know what? That definitely gives creep vibes he thinks it's swag and oh probably this is what the ladies like no they don't not from a 51 year old not from any one year old just gonna go ahead and move <laughs> on to that next quadruple date mix and mingle with Dietrich, aj chris jason stacy tressa <laughs> alexis and kyra i had to get all the names yeah, for this did. one mm -hmm. so it's basically a group cooking day and i was like this seems like more of a date that i would do Compared to the candle one, because you can make a nasty scent with candles. Well, you, they, they give you scents where you can smell, see what you like. But I think a cooking day, or actually, if it's what you like, I don't see anything wrong with that. It's something new. But cooking, mm -hmm. you can explore to try to make things if you don't. But I do think Diedrich set this up and he had the upper hand because he's a chef, you know. So I right. was like, see there, see, that's competition. And I believe that's what they said, too. Yeah, and Diedrich was with Alexis. And Alexis, you know, she likes to talk a big game. But, mm -hmm. oh, I'm with the chef. We're going to win. So she was going back and forth with Stacy, just, you know, doing like a fun little thing. Right. But AJ was over here getting like, see, that's why I don't like Alexis, because she's too aggressive. <laughs> I'm like, she's not on a date with you, AJ. Calm down. Right. And or maybe she was like being, you know, kind of like loud about it, because either that or he was ear hustling. He was. Because you were paying attention to your date. <laughs> because he don't care for Alexis, so he was already irritated from her from the beginning of the show. Okay. So now he's just keeping it going. I'm like, just just leave it alone, AJ. <laughs> this is an episode or scene with Tressa where she was talking to Diedrich, and Diedrich, I guess, seeing the light in Tressa. Yeah, but this was after they cooked, and she actually came over to feed him. They made macaroni and cheese, stuff like that. She's like, oh, taste this, and she fed him off the fork, and he was like, oh, okay. He was like, well, you know, I could get to know you, stuff like that. She's like, really? When did it change? Because when we first started talking, it was like a friend's vibe. So when did you get, like, when did the light go off for you? Well, he said that he used to be attracted to her type, but now he was attracted to a different type when we saw a flashback to a different episode. But I'm like, Tressa, like, you're beautiful. You should be confident. If Diedrich don't like you, just, you could have let that go because Diedrich, I don't think is a catch at all. But I don't think she should be, like, waiting for one of the men to be like, you know what? I do think you're attractive now. And for her to be like, you know, you like me. You really like me. Like, I don't like that. Yeah, her. you shouldn't have to ask somebody. You're in the house for the same reasons other ladies are, regardless of what size you are. You're in the same house, mm -hmm. trying to, there for the same reason. And with that coming up, it comes across that you're not as confident as you portray. And that, to me, is going to get her sent home faster because you always have to ask, you know, maybe am I enough? You shouldn't have to, but mm -hmm. Diedrich said, you know what, you're cool, I like you, and, you know, we'll see where things go. And then nothing else really happened within that day. Chris tried to talk to Stacy, but I guess Stacy weren't feeling Chris. No, Stacy's feeling AJ, the tall mm -hmm. chocolate, she said. And she moved over to somebody else, mm -hmm. so I wonder how long Chris is going to last. I don't know. Within this show, because I don't know if some of the ladies is feeling him like that. So now we get into the last part of the episode where we get to see the men meet up with nephew Tommy, you know, to tell him which one they feeling, which one they not feeling. Mm -hmm. But before they can get into that conversation, Jason lets us know that, you know what, Joel is a good dude because over the weekend he had to move mm -hmm. and Joel was there to help him out to move. And then Joel starts crying. I'm like, Joel, why are you crying? Now, at first I thought he was kind of like, fake crying like you know like oh, okay cool thank you but he was really dropping no a it tear. didn't look like he was fake crying well he, he turned red and everything he really dropped a tear and he was saying 
that, you know what, I want to help them out. We're just not here to find women. We're also here to find brotherhood. And I thought that was a really good saying. I honestly did. Yeah, that was probably like the first time, probably in any show or any season for Very Rachel authentic. Love, that, yeah, it did seem authentic where he wanted to actually be connected with the other male castmates that he has, which is nice because maybe he's looking for someone to bond and connect with. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, yeah, and I know his mama too. Me and his mama real cool now. I was I'm like, like, what happened during the move? But that's What's cool. Though? No, but that's cool though. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Hopefully they made a friend brotherhood connection that yeah. can last past Outside the show. The show. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So the women who they are not feeling. Um, David says he's not feeling Tressa. Mm -hmm. So does AJ and so does Troy. But we don't really care what Troy has to say. <laughs> I don't. Mom, you might. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Diedrich says he's not feeling Chrysanthemum and Kyra because, you know, if they're not feeling each other, he's not feeling them so they can go. I was like, see, Diedrich. Exactly. I'm like, what show is this? This is not the Diedrich ready to date Diedrich. <laughs> right. There's other people on the show. Exactly. Diedrich. <laughs> and then Jason says he's not feeling Andrea. And Chris says Andrea, the cat lady as well. And also Stacy because Stacy, you know, dissed him to go to Dietrich. Right. But the person that is being fought for by Dietrich is actually Teresa. And I was like, I didn't necessarily believe that at first till he gave his reasons why. Mm -hmm. And there was another man in there that said, yeah, she's cool, stuff like that. But the other men were like, well, you know, she comes across as a homie, things like that. And of course... Troy was like, well, I'm not attracted to her at all. We already know that, Troy. We already know what it is. They're not attracted to her physically, but she has a really great personality. But then when they were getting into the women that they were feeling and the dates that they had, nephew Tommy took this time to basically like call out Troy. Because Troy, you know, he's over here with Andrea and Amber. He was like, you know, I saw Amber wasn't really feeling me kissing on her cheek. I guess that's just how some women are. Um... Most women don't want you to kiss them, period, on the first date. Exactly. Anyway. And then Tommy was like, man, there's 10 women here. You, you can't, can't kiss half of the people in here, and they think that you're ready to love. So we can already see who might be on the chopping block for next week. <laughs> so the boys who are on the chopping block this week were, of course, Andrea and Tressa. At first, I thought Tressa was going to go home. Because it just seemed like a lot of the men in there just weren't feeling Tressa compared mm -hmm. to Andrea, who they said that they didn't really get a chance to know. But Tressa was the one that actually did not go home because Dietrich was like, you know, I was actually the one in here fighting for you the most and some other men wouldn't get to know Right, me. she's like, what? Woo, don't do me like that. And I'm like, listen, Tressa, step your game up, get your personality up, and mingle and be confident about it. Yes, but Andrea was the one to go home because... She didn't mingle with a lot of people. She was kind of like off. And David was kind of like, you know, what would you do different if you could? She was like, I guess I would put myself out there a little bit more. I'm like, girl, you had to. That brunch was going like this. Exactly. You had to do something. And then she had the audacity to be surprised that a lot of the men weren't feeling She's like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't matter. They it's the majority out. of them. Mm -hmm. But that was pretty much the episode. Like you said before, and like I know other people have also said in their comments, the show would allow them to get to know each other right. just a little bit more before we're already sending people home within an hour. Yeah. You know? I agree completely. So, What did you think about this episode? This episode, well... I mean, Troy is being Troy. I, he was that way last week when we saw him it, when they first came to the house. So I wasn't surprised at that. And um, I'm surprised at Teresa for her lack of confidence. And I'm surprised at Alexis for being overly very aggressive, overly sexually aggressive. Yes. Well, thank you all so much for watching this week's episode with us. If you haven't already yet. Leave us a comment down below to let us know what you thought about this week's episode. Mm -hmm. Give us a like and share this video to other people who watch Ready to Love. Thank you all again for watching. And as always, live simply, be grateful.